For this one book, I, I think uh, many Nigerians should also try and go through by Ike Ikurumaru, who will love my country. Now, I'll give you a quote today. Women will have priority in my administration. I'm proud of the women who have been given opportunity to serve in my administration. They are achieving a lot of successes and making progress in their endeavors. The end of quote. That's Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State talking. Well, uh, in the week, that state has been busy, extra busy, with a summit. In fact, two summits, one by women and the other one which just ended. But for the women, Mr. Obaseki noted that since his assumption of office, he's uh, been able to solve the death of women in the state's administration. That's women for a point of office. We need to take it a little bit higher. Well, in the week, I spoke with broadcast journalist Adora Onyechere, who is running for the Imo State House of Assembly. Well, as side broadcasting, her passion for issues affecting women and youth are well known, and she's been a strong voice for positive change. She's often been discussed as one of the leading youth to watch out for in 2019, as she continues to focus on social reorientation and self-development for young people from our own state, especially in Okigwe. Well, I was going to ask her if she has a statue standing already in her state. But anyway, we need to see more women run and run to win. Stove on pot and fire, it's cooking time. It's political stew, M. Suleiman Alede. Welcome. It's all a stewy moment. And uh, we've been asking the big question what are they all cooking? We're talking about politicians. How best and how well can they cook the meal that the people will definitely love? Well, you can get a watch us live online on the go at tvcnews.tv forward slash live streaming. We're also live on YouTube, TVC News Nigeria, live and youtube.com forward slash political stew. You can also watch us live on Facebook and remember to download the political stew app on Google Play Store and follow the show and news on politics. When we come back, we'll be asking questions of a woman and a gentleman. Now, politics, uh, time for us to look at uh, what exactly is happening in Lagos State. Specifically, we've been asking the question, how ready or how set is Lagos People's Democratic Party? Joining me now is Fatima Mohammed. She is uh, well, a member of the PDP as well as uh, um, a contestant into the Federal House of Constituency, representing Ifako Ijai constituency here in Lagos. Good to have you join me on Political Stew. Thank you so very much, Suleiman. It's good to be here. I'm always excited when I have women because sometimes I get to meet some people. I have a friend who is a woman editor and she sometimes asks, how come you don't have a lot of women? I think, well, a lot of women, I don't seem to see a lot of women. And today we have just one before us today on the show. So it's a big one for us. Now, let's look at the PDP to start with. Uh, you're a member of the PDP. Oh, yes, I am. I say that I am proudly PDP, very proudly PDP. But yes. you, you, you were once with the, uh, is it the defunct ACN? Or the well, it's not the, well, the defunct ACN. Yes, now the, they're called the APC right now. Yeah, I used to be with them. I actually started my political sojourn with the AD. So, so I... I I recall again that you were also once, uh, you had worked with uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu then in Lagos. Yes, uh, you, were, I was, you were part of his team that saw him in yes, the office. Yes, I was then. in Batko, I was in PRS, the Planning, Research and Strategic Arm um, of the Bola Ahmed Tinubu Campaign Organization, and I'm sure he's proud of me today. I was going to ask You know, that. When, when a father has a child that has done well, that has done things that have been very outstanding, you don't have a choice but to be proud of that child. So I'm sure he's proud of me. You're one woman who is a strategist, politically speaking yes. now, and uh, now you're running for office. Uh, and how does it feel when people say the PDP in Lagos doesn't exist? It's really funny. It's funny because when you say that the PDP in Lagos doesn't exist, it makes me laugh. Because right about now, we have about five House of Representative members from the People's Democratic Party. And for us, it's a plus because what we're coming from 
it, it, very unfriendly terrain. A lot of people have the opinion that ah, APC is, is basically the landlords, you know, of um, the political terrain in Lagos. Aren't they? But no, they are not. They are not. The fact that they have been opportune to be in power for 17, 18 years now doesn't make them, you know, the godfathers of this town. Watch out for us in 2019. We're coming back. You will find a situation where Jimmy Abadji becomes the governor of Lagos State. It is doable and achievable. You will find, you know, more of us, especially women, in the House of Representatives and the Lagos State House of Assembly. So 2019 is a game changer for us. We had uh, uh, setbacks in the People's Democratic Party, but we're coming back stronger, we're better, we're re-energized, we're reinvigorated, so we're coming back better. But, but, but you, you, you would agree with me, even though you're not uh, Mr. Agbaja, you would agree with me that you are a different breed of politician you've always been you know uh, you know in under the spotlight but for someone like your candidate once he loses he goes you know he hibernates and and that's, people that's, people people keep asking how come you pop that's up an erroneous impression i keep saying it all the time oh you, you you've heard that before i've heard it severally but it's not true the thing is we were first different personalities before we became politicians all right i am somebody who is more outspoken i am somebody who you see all of the time mr agbaje is totally different he is somebody who loves his space somebody who loves to just do his thing his way he hasn't stopped being in politics after he contested for the gubernatorial elections in 2015 and he won he was um short changed they robbed him of his ticket he didn't go back and hibernate he went further to contest for the chairmanship the national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, that we had itches and all of that before we finally put our acts together. He's been working on the ground. So when they say, oh, how come he just goes? I'm wondering what do you want him to do? There's a government in power. What is he meant to do? Is he meant to, you know, continually stand as a voice in the opposition? Some of us are not structured that way. And I say that Mr. Agbaje is a different breed of politician. You know, I learned my dodgedness from him. I am a very dodged fighter. I learned um, ensuring that po politics is doable and achievable to the electorate from him. I have learned, you know, so many other things from him from rather than, you know, the usual way that we know about going all the way, being forceful, but we all have our personalities. Is it, is it right to say uh, you finally got your, you know, your wings? to fly in Lagos after the emergence of Atiku Abubakar. By the way, you, you lead a group. Oh, yes, Atiku that's Nation. the Atiku Nation Independent Campaign Group. I'm the Director General, yes. So, so uh, it would seem as if... Um, that's, that's an erroneous impression. I didn't finally get my way when he became candidate. No, I'm talking about Lagos PDP. You know, in 2006, got, got I won the primaries. We had issues in the party at that time. That's when we had rival, you know, rival um, escorts and all of that. So, I mean, I, my name was substituted at INEC. I did that, that primaries and won that election free and square. And furthermore, the present House of Representative members, they had to come and consult me, you know, to help him get there. So he, he, I, I didn't just win now because Atiko is there. I have always been a lone voice in Lagos. I have always been a voice, you know, who stands and say, I dare to speak above a whisper. So it's not about anyone getting in and giving me a leverage. No, I've always found my path. Now let's talk about your path. And uh, now you're looking towards Abuja, which is very key. And yes, your constituents, uh, what's the vibe you get from your constituents when you go around, even though the campaigns have not officially started? Yeah, the campaigns have not officially started. But like you said, um, some of us are used to being you know, visible faces all the year round, whether it's electioneering period or not. I am one of those politicians who believe that you have to keep giving back to the society. So when you say, what is the vibe in Ifako Ejai? I don't think Ifako Ejai believes that there are two candidates. I'm not even sure that they believe any other party is contesting. Because as far as they, as they are concerned, you speak to a, a two-year-old child in Ifako Ejai and the only thing they're telling you is Fatima. Fatima is the popular chorus in Ifako Ejai. But be that as it may, I'm not resting on my oars. I'm not getting bloated about it. I'm saying I'm working until I get my certificate of, of return on the 17th of February, 2019, God willing, inshallah. But what am I saying in essence? I'm saying that I am one politician who has direct access to my people. I'm very close to the electorate. I am, 
I've been running a people-friendly program. You know, up until this moment, I haven't ever been in power, never been in government. I have used my phones. The, the, my precedences are there to show for it. You can go through my profile. You can go through, you know, my track records. I have, if I could, is the second largest local government in the whole of Lagos State. And we haven't been given attention at all. It is so bad. Tell, tell us more about your, your, you know, area. Because uh, one thing about, uh, you know, people who go to Abuja, sometimes yes. you try to reach your representatives and uh, they're not forthcoming. They're not forthcoming. That's, and it's so sad. You know, I, I keep saying that. When you get into Ifako Ejai, there was one time I did the Easter Fiesta walk and I had to go around. And I was weeping. I was weeping because I got to places that were so dilapidated. And I kept asking, is this part of Lagos? They said yes. Like I said to you, Ifakoeja is the second largest in the whole of Lagos. But there is no evidence of representation. The few evidences of representation that you see these days are the things that I have done. Water is an essential part. It's one of the essential basic necessities of life. Water is so difficult to come by. I had to sink 13 boreholes. You did that from, I did from, that from your pocket? From my pocket. I have constructed some bridges. I have um Did you say bridges? Oh yes, I said bridges. We have a lot of link bridges that has, you know, been causing a lot of accidents. There's this particular gorge in Birimi. Birimi is, you know, a part of my local government. Every year when the rain comes, you have about four or five children dying yearly because the gorge is full and then, you know, the children just coming back from school, the floods just, you know, take but that was the first thing I fixed. I ensured and since 2016 we haven't recorded one single death. For me as a mother, it makes me happy. I am fulfilled. And you, you know, you walk around the Fakoija and every ward that you go to in that local government, you see a touch of Fatima. I have empowered close to 1,500 women. I just finished empowering 600 women about three weeks ago and we're not stopping. Not only am I empowering them, I am working with a microfinance bank to give them grants, take off grants. We pay, you know, the interest and they if, go ahead If, if, if we're to go by what you just highlighted, talking about everyone you know, having uh, your name on their lips, it will mean yes. that the 2019 election possibly might not be about political parties, but about 2019 individuals. 2019 is not going to be about political parties. I've said that. I said it's going to be totally different. You find a 2019 where you would say, well, based on your precedences. That's why I tell people, let it be a campaign based on issues. Don't get petty. Don't get carried away by, you know, this political, I'm, I'm carried away, I belong to this particular political party. I keep asking, what has your party done for you? How well have the, I mean, we've had House of Representative members for about 18 years now, and there hasn't been one single evidence of representation. It is really so sad. It makes me weep. There was something called the school storm that I did. I did this when the school resumed. In 2018, in this century, I saw children walking on the streets without shoes, going to school with poly bags you and school you, bags. You don't think it's a matter of choice? It's not a matter of choice. I'm just trying to be cheeky. About I know that. you're trying to be cheeky, <laughs> but it's so sad. Yet we have an allowance accrued to that local government, to that, to that federal constituency. No evidence of representation. I had to give 500 children school bags, school shoes, and water bottles. You know, just to make life. Constituency allowance, because you just talked about an allowance uh, yes. that is accrued yes. to each constituency. So, does it, you know, there's always been an argument whether it does exist and what that is actually When they say for. it doesn't exist, it makes me laugh. For, for every constituency, you have projects that you're supposed to come back to the house. Why are you representing us if you cannot go and speak as a voice to ensure that there's change? Change that is achievable and doable to the electorate. Change that we can all see that is feasible. Not a change of taking what is accrued to that local government, you know, to some godfathers so that you can, they can keep returning you in office and then you're, they're returning you all the time. It's not about the people. You look at, um, you go to Edo State, for example, and every time that I get to see almost a day, I, I, I am excited. You look at a Rita in Lagos State, for me, Rita looks like the only House of Representative member. Maybe I am talking about the women right about now. I'm very no, no, gender no, no, sensitive. You're, you're, you're I'm gender biased. I'm a feminist. 
Okay. You know, I feel so good about it. I am somebody who tells the women, like I have said, you know, you must endeavor to speak above a whisper. Nobody has what it takes to shut you up. You must always scream so that you can be heard. You look at what Rita is doing in Ajegunle, Ajerami Felodo. I am so proud of her. You know, and you look at an almost a day in Edo State. You, you, you take her background. And, you know, if you look at her background, you say, oh, she's, she was properly raised. She was born with a silver spoon. She's a Benidon's daughter. She didn't do anything. But Oma Sede is a grassroots politician. That's what we're talking about. And you, you find out that a lot of places, she lit up the place. We didn't have light. We didn't have water. All of these basic amenities and necessities she brought to the place. Was she doing that with her salary? So to, let's talk about yeah, grassroots, uh, gra cruel. grassroots politics. Uh, now, in referring to these other women you just highlighted, Oma Sede, Benidon, and, uh, and, and Rita. And Rita. Oji. Oji. Uh, yes. It then means that... Politics truly is local. And Politics is very local, yes. So what do, what do you make of politicians who don't have the local feel, the grassroots feel? You see, that's what makes me laugh all the time. I say that you cannot be an elitist and be a good politician. You must be a grassroots person. You must be able to feel the pulse of the grassroots. And, you know, I'm speaking very humbly. When I walk on the streets in Ifakwa Ijai, it makes me, we went for a meeting, a stakeholders, INEC stakeholders meeting last week. As I was coming out of the meeting, the kids were coming out from school, you know, about 1.30, 2.30 or something. And all of them screamed, Honorable Fatima, we love you, you're beautiful, it makes me happy. They, I feel they, they actually did that? They actually did that. You, I launched my, I inaugurated my campaign council on Thursday. And I wept that day because the private school students in my constituency put their lunch money together. 10 naira, 20 naira, you know. I mean, it came up to about 6,000, 7,000, and they brought it to me. They said, Honorable Fatima, we're donating it to your campaign. That speaks volume. Even if that money was 100 naira. Sure. I wept that day because I had never seen a thing like it in my entire life. And I said, well, Fatima, you're appreciated. It's not about, you know, vying for a political office. Is the fact that you're touching lives. Is the fact that you're touching the people. The fact that you have grassroots people whose mentality you have been able to change. Now people in Ifakoja know that it is beyond political party. It is no longer the party. It is who is giving us the dividends of democracy. And that's, it makes me feel passionate. It makes me feel, feel very fulfilled. So, so when, when the campaigns officially start in November yes. 18th, 18th, yes. Uh, you think uh, the party, the governing party, that's the APC, will sit idly by and watch uh, Honorable Fatima, you know, who the kids Nobody's now recognize. <laughs> Nobody's uh, going to sit to, to, idly. To, to have an easy ride. But what I want you to know is it's not about having an easy ride. I believe in, in God absolutely. Because now I'm trying for you to tell me, to tell me more about your agenda for the people. Uh, beyond what you've done for them already now, yes. even before seeking office. I'm still office. doing more. Still so doing so more. what exactly do you think will be the selling point, uh, if there, there are? For me, the, the, my selling point is reaching out to the electorate. I, I, I see a situation where I took a trip around the Fakoja six months after becoming House of Rep member, and I see them having the basic necessities. It makes me fulfilled. I am passionate about women, like I've said to you. I want to see more women empowered. I want, uh, like, you know, the, my one female pastor says, it's no longer fashionable for you to stand and fight your husband over money for housekeeping. I want to see a woman empowered who can add value to her marriage. I say that a wife of no value. A wife of no impact is a wife of no value. I want to see more impactful women. I want to take away the youths who the situation in the country now has turned them to area boys. And you know, they say they have a lot of bases. I reckon and, and I associate with them. You see me go to this bases. I sit with them. I speak to them. I try and change their mentality. So you know about bases? Oh, yes, I do know about bases. I am a local politician. I'm a grassroots person. So I know about bases and I go to every base. For the benefit of those who don't understand what we're talking about, could you expatiate a little bit? Let me expatiate what a base is. A base is a place where you have some boys who you call the hitmen in that particular area. You know, they are just like the warlords in that area. So they, they are, they're in charge. So for a politician to be able to have an easy, easy passage, you must be associated. You must be acquainted. You must be friends with every 
body in each basis. And these people are not particularly politicians. They are just people have, have who you, live so in So when this you speak vicinity. with these people, because uh, it was same as if some of them, are, are they happy being what they are? They are not happy. That's what I'm saying to you. I said the situation has forced them to be what they are. Like this, during my last empowerment, I brought in some youths. We taught them candle making. We taught them how to make paints. And, you know, when I see them being productive back, it makes me feel fulfilled. So nobody is happy being sitting down in some base, waiting for some politicians to come and give you peanuts when you can actually walk and earn a living. But again, it, it's a known fact that some politicians also use some of these people to foment trouble. Yes, so, so, so a lot of politicians have you, have you been speaking, them have you, have you been speaking to, with them? I have been telling them. I've been, that's why I said the first thing I did. Or do you have some of, uh, some of the bad guys? Uh, uh, orientation. Uh, we don't have bad guys in Ifakwe Jai. You don't have any bad no, guys? No, we have on, very on, wonderful boys on in Ifakwe On your pay, payroll? Well, I, I don't know why you need to put anybody on your payroll. If you're, if you're a grassroots person and you have the... the love of the electorate at heart and you have their interest these people can read between the lines i have changed their orientation i've said to them all of us politicians stop handling the guns for us stop helping us from in trouble stop helping us maim and kill people tell us to bring our children out most of us send our kids abroad tell us to go and bring our children to hold the guns you don't have to do it for us if we're doing what is right then we don't need the guns i preach a sermon of votes don't fight. Every vote must count. And so they know now. 2019 is not going to be an easy ride anywhere. So um, uh, now let's talk about national politics very quickly before we leave, if we can actually do that uh, very, you know, swiftly. Uh, looking at your candidate, Atiku Abubakar. <coughs> the next president of Nigeria. You think so? I don't think so. I know so. Of a certainty. Oh, tell us what you know. What I know. Like you all know. Look at his precedence. Everything that Atiku Abubakar has touched, he has turned it around. He is, he, you, he, you cannot pass through his life. He cannot pass through an institution, and the institution will not have a positive change. Right now, everybody's talking about restructuring and all of that. I mean, he's been talking restructuring for years. He's had his economic blueprints that he's had, you know, for way back that he's, you know, being vice president. Only Atiku Abubakar can get Nigeria working again. Trust me. There would be a total turnaround. And he has said it severally. I am going to be very youth and women friendly in my government. I don't need 40 ministers no, but, but, to sit but, but, in Abuja but, but, and not I, I, connect. I don't think anyone will be surprised to hear him say that. Uh, perhaps he's trying to pick holes in some of the statements or comments that uh, well, some other politicians... I, uh, some if will you say, know Atiku Abubakar some, some very well, he's he, not petty. But he's been there before. He's been there before, and you can judge from all that he did while he was there. It was uh, the president, Obasanjo, who did all that. But President Obasanjo tells you all the time, oh, it is that Abubakar that put together, that put the, the EFCC, the ICPC, he did the economic team that keeps working. Fair he was never he, around. He, he never liked him. He just woke up someday and he said uh, he's been forgiven. I don't know what went down. Well, when you say he never liked him, these things are very personal issues. Yeah, they are personal issues. You know, issues, you can wake up tomorrow and say, I can wake up tomorrow and say, I don't like Suleiman. Fatima Mohammed, they made their personal issues a national affair to the extent that to everyone thought I, that I, I, Well, if you know, Obasanjo is our father. And like I said to you, we all have our personalities. Obasanjo is a father who doesn't know how to keep things to himself. You know, he's angry with you, he's saying it. He's happy with you, he's saying it. So if they have personal issues and he says he has forgiven him, that's in the past. They are brothers, they are friends. Together we will get Nigeria working again. So... One last word here. The same assurance you have of seeing vice, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar come into office, do you yes. have the same for yourself getting into office? Well, all things being equal, even if things are not always equal, I know that by the grace of God, I would be elected without manipulations. Even if there are manipulations, those manipulations will not work. I have come to contest because I need to palliate the pains. I need to cushion the effect of the poverty of the people of Ifakwa. Well, I met Tinubu as one of your political mentors. If he reaches out to you and say, Hajia Fatima Muhammad, come back to come back home. Uh, you know why I love Bala Ahmed Tinubu? He's a man <laughs> who knows all his children by name. You're not answering me. And by intention, I'm answering you. Bala Ahmed Tinubu, my father, 
will not say to me, Fatima, come back home. He knows what I believe in. He knows what I stand for. He knows what I represent. He respects that, and I respect him so much for respect. A fine him. place for us to say many thanks for being such nice company. Thank you so very much, Suleiman. I hope we'll do this again soon. Certainly. Well, we'll take a moment while we come back. We'll be speaking with a gentleman who is a tax expert, uh, but this time he wants to seek the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That's when we'll return.